start the recording and dive right in. So tonight we have, this evening, we have the pleasure of having Commissioner Tony Phillips with us. He's going to talk a little bit about criteria and timeline for the PMC. So that'll be really valuable. Um, so think about any questions you may like to ask him. And same meeting as usual, we'll hear from the teams. We'll have a little time to interact with each other. We'll hear from Commissioner Phillips and then Carlene, and then we'll wrap up and you'll be off on your evening with some daylight left. <laughs> um, so as you know, our timeline is just shifting a little bit here and there based on when the census data comes out um, and most importantly for us tonight will be that um, the referendum on the ballot April 6th is just right around the corner. So we'll hear from those teams. But what I'd like to think about a little bit this evening, and we'll chat about this a little bit later is, um, you know, unlike a regular election where it's like, you're working, you're working, we have an election in November and then everyone can sleep for a month, <laughs> we're, we're in a, uh, a very long-term fight here. So, you know, things are gonna take a while and the deadline for the maps is April, 2022 and hopefully we'll get some resolution way before that, but it might take a while. So as you think about the next year, you know, basically a year from now is the deadline. I just encourage you to think um, we want our movement, our grassroots movement to be very sustainable, to be very long-term, to be strong straight through the end. And so think about, um, you know, where are the moments in this timeline where maybe things are a little less intense? Do you want to take a little time off? How are you going to be taking care of yourself throughout all of this? Because what I what I would hate to happen is all we're all putting our energy in 120% now, and then we get to like October and we're all like out of energy. And that's when a lot of action is happening. So I'm just encouraging everyone to think about how are you gonna work through this? Um, there's gonna be a lot of change. So it, the, the breaks or the low points might be different than expected, um, but how are you gonna take care of yourself? Um, and how are you gonna make sure that this movement can stay strong straight to um, April of next year? And it's April Fool's Day, so I'm not, I don't have any jokes, but you can think about when you want to go sit on the beach. <laughs> um, all right, well, we're going to dive right into team updates, and Douglas and Ann are up first. Unmute. <laughs> Um, okay, our team, um, as usual, kind of the same report. Our goal is to convince the legislators in the Western Wisconsin area to vote for the fair map this year and also to vote to co-sponsor the legislation to create a nonpartisan redistricting committee. Uh, that's what we're about. That's what we've been planning. Uh, we're still sort of in the planning stages, but we have made some forward moves in um, setting a timeline and a little bit more specifically about how we're going to contact the legislators. Um, next slide, Janelle. So um, what we want to do, and, and um, there will be an ask in a second, is identify organizations um, in the Western Wisconsin area that might be impacted by legislation from um, Madison, um, either positively or negatively. Um, and we want to put pressure on legislators to uh, vote for the legislation that we want. So uh, we have different, different ways we're going to try to contact these organizations. We're working on that. We're working on what organizations we want to contact, but we want to get our message out to them, the organizations that, that have some sort of connection with legislation from Madison, as I said. So we've got brochures that are in the process. We've got a mailer project that I've talked about before. And we're really interested in developing relationships with our legislators so that they will listen to us and understand the seriousness of um, the issues coming up. And um, so here's briefly um, an ask that we have 
Uh, what organizations in your area might we contact? These would be organizations that have connections to legislation surrounding perhaps healthcare, surrounding jobs, surrounding um, uh, conservation, broadband, any place where there might be legislation coming up in Madison that our legislators might not be considering in the way we would like them to. So if you can, in I'll put my email in the chat, if you've got organizations in your area that we could contact, um, we'd really appreciate that. Um, the other thing that I need um, is two people in the Barron, Polk, St. Croix, Dunn, Washburn, District 75 area who might be willing to contact and develop a relationship with Rep Representative Armstrong. I don't have anybody, I don't know people in that area. We do want a, a direct contact with him. Um, and the other thing I found out today is that there um, is going to be a Zoom call with Representative Zimmerman. Um, I'm looking for people who might be interested in joining me on a Zoom call with him to talk about the budget and um, places where we would like uh, the budget to respond to issues. Um, if you're interested, I will give you more information. Um, if you're interested, again, contact me. Um, I'll put my email in the chat, um, but I would like a, quite a few people to be on a Zoom call with um, our representative and um, kind of put him on the line about how items in the budget that we would like him to be sure stay there. Uh, Douglas, is there anything else that we need to talk about? Well, it covers it, thanks. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I think that's it. I'll put my email in the chat, so. Awesome, thanks. Um, so I'm here to talk about the grassroots support for the PMC. We've got three items in the works. Number one is we want to collect at least 200 communities of interest in our seven county area. And so there's a training on district or software April 10th at 3 p.m. I know a bunch of people from our team are gonna go. And if um, there's anyone else like that wants to join, that would be really, really fantastic. It'll give you an idea of how to um, enter communities of interest, what kinds of questions to ask and that kind of stuff. So I encourage you to do that. And Kathleen's putting the information in the chat. We are also working hard to launch a art and gerrymandering name to be determined, but where we would like to find groups and organizations in the area that would like to create artistic versions of their communities of interest. So we'd like to use that project to raise awareness, get more people into the fight, and then create something beautiful and uplifting, <laughs> which is a nice change from sometimes the way that we have to work in these projects. So uh, that's coming up. And if you're interested in participating in that, let Cheryl, Maplethorpe, Sarah Church, or I know, um, and then the third thing is a Wisconsin map, we map contest, which Don Lake will tell you about in a second. Um, but before I pass it over to him, I just wanted to give you a couple updates. So Anne Marie McClellan that we've been extremely fortunate to have um, part of our leadership team here for since the beginning, since last summer, with her role at the PMC growing, she needs to step down to allow herself to have a little bit more time to focus on that. Cause I think we all agree that's a higher priority. <laughs> um, so she's on vacation right now, but I just send out a huge thank you to her for all the ways that she's participated and we can still reach out to her anytime if we need to. Um, but if you have been in communication with her in the past and you want to send her a little thank you or anything like that, that'd be really great because she's, been a huge part of our team, really helpful in getting this project off the ground. And um, it's, it's so fantastic that she's playing such a great role on the PMC right now. So, and then as we say goodbye to Anne-Marie, we say hello to Don Leak, that you'll hear from in a second. And he's leading the Wisconsin Map Contest and he'll, um, so you'll get to know him over the next uh, months. So Don, I'll pass it over to you. Okay, can you hear me? All right, good. Uh, so I'll try to make this as quick as possible. If you press the uh, contact the commissioner button on the web page of PMC, you'll see that there are ways to contribute. And 
at the right hand side there's a request for uh, communities of interest maps and state maps in any format and so that's what we're trying to do with the wisconsin map contest is to encourage people to submit quality maps and we're focusing on the assembly maps that's the 99 district map it runs parallel not in competition with the community of interest in initiative so a few of us in the PMC support group think this contest idea is a good way to get people excited about drawing that district map, uh, which I don't think is an easy thing to do. So I got uh, three points here, what we've done and what we need. Um, we've uh, worked on the rules. We're working uh, uh, with an outline from the Draw the Lines Pennsylvania contest. They've been, Pennsylvania's been running the contest, map contest for three years. Uh, if you ever feel down about uh, uh, fair maps and the work that you're doing, I suggest going to look at uh, Draw the Lines uh, eight minute video for inspiration. I do it occasionally, but it's a really good project and it'll show you what we're trying to do right here. Uh, Dan Paulson's on the team working with me He's going to do our web page with uh, Janelle's assistance. Uh, drawing legal assembly maps, not easy. So we plan on providing useful information on our web page. Um, the written testimony just came out, uh, 750 records. Uh, and uh, I've got some help. Janie uh, Creeby and, and Dan have volunteered to help me process those written testimonies we're, we're looking for. Uh, specific information that that uh, might be included in the new assembly maps. So if you want to volunteer a couple of hours, that's all that all it would take. Uh, uh, email me, my email's in the invite, and uh, I'll sign you up for two uh, congressional districts of written testimony. It's pretty interesting after a while. Uh, second item, publicity. Bob Malines on the team. He reached out to Kristen McDonough. McDaniels in the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction. And she wrote back that she'll send our notice to 2000 social studies educators in the state. I can't think of a better late spring project for high school civic students to pursue. If we get a 10% return on that 2000 social studies educators, that's, that's 200 maps. 1%, 20 maps. Uh, I think this project is uh, worthy just for this educational aspect. Uh, Bob could use a little bit more help in developing contact lists, but we're on our way there. Uh, finally, if you're wondering, you know, Don, what makes you think you can tell a good map from a bad one? I've learned in, uh, a lot in the past month, but I'm no expert on map evaluation. Of course, when you have a contest, you got to declare some winners. Fortunately for us, we got a software product that will help us do that. Winners will be determined in a more quantitative fashion. Um, we're using 2018 ACS data. That's about the most relevant data we can get. Of course, the 2020 census isn't in yet. And uh, we're hoping that we'll get a lot of uh, contestants to uh, participate in our um, contest. Uh, we've got two divisions, the youth division, primarily high school students, and then the open division, hoping to attract some uh, higher education students and the general populace at, at large. We will tailor our uh, weighting criteria to match those of the PMCs. You're going to hear about that uh, when uh, Commissioner Phillips uh, talks. And right now, I don't know if he's listening, but I'd like to give him a tremendous thanks and also uh, to Anne-Marie um, McClellan and all the commissioners for the time that they've spent uh, developing a document that, that you're going to see. Um, right I'm now, we're giving ourselves the month of April uh, to get that contest in order. We're going to start it, hopefully, in May 1st and end it July 31st in time for the commission to see the all of the maps and we will encourage every single participant to submit their map to the PMC.
All right, that's it. Thank you. Awesome. And Kathleen. Hey everyone. Um, so I've been leading the referendum teams in Polk, Buffalo, and Pepin County or coordinating. Um, so just some updates and Republic is coming up. So we're gonna have people voting soon, which is exciting. Um, in Polk County, we've been doing a lot like articles in the newspaper, radio ads, yard signs, big signs, sending up postcards and um, in some phone banking. Um, <clears throat> Pepin is working on their resolution um, they're going to submit a petition next week um, to their first committee. So they're on their process to getting a resolution passed and Buffalo County folks are going to let you know what they're doing. So we're just trying to get as many people to vote yes. Um, we're feeling excited. The energy is definitely building and building. Um, so the last thing I'll request um, for your help is please phone bank with us. Um, we have one more this Saturday from 10 to 12.30. Um, I'm gonna put a link in the chat box for the registration. Um, so far, it's been really fun. I don't know, I've really enjoyed it. Um, the people who have participated have enjoyed it. Um, and there's definitely a lot of people who still don't know about the referendum. So every time we've done phone banking, it's like at least quite a few people who didn't know what was happening and now they're planning to vote yes. So I think it's definitely worth the time. And it'd be really great to have like a ton of people at our last date. So if you're able, please join and um, just use that registration link. And I'll pass it off to Buffalo, the Buffalo folks. All right, uh, well, we're in the home stretch. So we're, we're, ex we're excited about that. Um, we've been hitting uh, the papers down here pretty well. In fact, a couple of the weeks we had two letters running, which is pretty big for down here in Buffalo County. Um, we've got most of the yard signs out. Uh, we're pretty spread out down here, but uh, it was interesting. We, right out of the blue, I got a contact from someone in Nelson who said uh, he wanted the yard and sign, so I dropped it off and he took a picture of it on his Facebook and posted it and he said, I'm proud to put this out there. And so that was, that was encouraging. Postcards, we, we mailed out a uh, little over 1,800, which again, for down here is, is a pretty good number. Uh, a shout out to Carlene. We ended up being about 130 short and my wife Renee asked her to, to expedite some out. And I think she sent out a United jet and we got them like uh, in two days. So that was that was much appreciated. And then the last thing we're, we're trying to hit here in the next in the last four days before the, uh, the, uh, the ballot is radio ads. So we've got a couple stations up here and um, it was interesting walking through that and getting it uh, recorded, but uh, that's about it. And with my, uh, I'm going to yield my remaining time to Chairperson Janelle. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. <laughs> um, is Carol Skinner on the line? Carol, Carol. I think she's on a flight and just maybe still I, on I can give this update if you want. Yeah, go ahead, Carlene. So there's no update. That's the bottom line. There's no update. There's no ruling on the Will Jensen rules change uh, petition. Um, we thought it would come in February. Now we're past March uh, and no April Fool joke. So, of course, the mask, you know, striking down the mask mandate was much more important than this, I suppose. Um, so what you should know and probably do know is that um, Lester Pines and, and uh, the law firm of Lester Pines and Buck have uh, filed suit on behalf of Madison Teachers Incorporated, my union, and a couple of other plaintiffs against the GOP leaders who um, hired lawyers ahead of any maps. And uh, so there's nothing to litigate, you know, potentially. And uh, we'll see where that goes, but there's also nothing about that. So it's, uh, you know, they're just waiting and, and working, you know, working behind the scenes, ahead of the scenes, trying to get things done. So uh, that's it. Thank you. And now we're just going to take a little bit of time to think through what I talked about before, which is 
we want our project to be really sustainable. We want to be strong through April of next year. And so just take a little fun time, give yourself your brain a little break and think about how, how are you going to, you know, take a break or participate or do you feel like you can keep going at the same pace you're going now through the entire year? So just um, take a little bit of time to, to talk with some Fair Maps friends about how to keep our project sustainable. So I'll open the rooms right now. Tom and Kathleen, let me know if you were hoping to go to a room and you weren't able to, or if you just wanted to wait, that's totally fine too. Hi, Pat. Good to see you. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. How are you doing? Good. Uh, in case you are wondering um, why my name is Deborah up there, this is my wife's the computer I have <laughs> that I have my Zoom on right now. Uh, my uh, desktop uh, went out of commission, so I had to take it into this uh, digital brigade to uh, get fixed. Oh, great. And that's not come back yet, so I've been using a substitute computer. You might notice that my, my face color looks a lot different. Yeah, well, I'm glad you had a backup available. <laughs> so do you live in this, in River Falls, Pat? Yes, I do. Ah, oh, so do I. <laughs> all right, welcome back, everyone. I hope you all are, your minds are filled of lovely, lovely breaks and vacations and ways to relax. <laughs> um. So we will now give the floor to um, Commissioner Anthony Phillips. You may have seen a presentation that he made quite a while ago called the 72%, which was really helpful to me when I first started learning about fair maps. So um, thank you, Commissioner, for that. And um, so he's a commissioner and also active with the with um, vote, Voters First Wisconsin. So welcome, Commissioner Phillips, and I'll pass it over to you. All right, yeah, thank you. Um, just a couple things, yeah, Anne-Marie is doing amazing work and uh, it's, it's not unusual or whatever that she can't work so strong with leagues of women voters. She is doing, she's a project manager basically for the People's Maps. She's in every subcommittee She's overseeing everybody's work. So she's really working hard and congratulations to her. And then to Don Leak, you know, that's the first time I had seen that software product to try to quantitate the maps. And uh, I'd like to learn more about that. So maybe we could uh, chat about that sometime. Janelle, I'm wondering if I could share the screen. Is yeah. That, if I try. Uh, yeah, let me stop sharing and then you should be able to. Okay, are you guys seeing the People's Maps Commission? Yep. Okay, so this is the front page of the website. And basically what I wanna to bring to the group tonight, you guys are doing so well, is just that the People's Map Commission, we're, we are getting excited about our website. We've been trying to gear it up. Uh, the, the, the government staff has helped us tremendously. And so this is the front page of the website 
which we are tweaking. I'm not going to say how we're tweaking. We may see an interview from Chair Ford on here. Um, but then what I wanted to show you is uh, across the top here, there's headers, People's Map Commission, about the commission, educational materials about gerrymandering. I'm not going to go into that. But what I want to go into is uh, the work and records, which I think I have right here. Work and this is, can you see the commission's work and records page? So are you guys seeing that? Yep. yep. Okay. So this is new, you know, even this week. And um, we talk about the more than 20 hours of public hearings that we've been involved in. Feedback from over a thousand Wisconsinites, both by public testimony and written, um, and 18 redistricting experts so far. In this website are uh, recordings of each of the eight congressional district hearings. And then there's a tab where people can now go to all of the currently 635 written comments. I'm not going to do that, but it's a spreadsheet with a name and basically a summary of what was discussed. Um, and then the next thing uh, is the criteria memo. We, we've worked very hard on the criteria memo. We spent nearly an hour and a half at it Tuesday night, going line by line, word by word. Um, let's see if I can get to that. So that, that's what this is. And this is now on the website the People's Map Commission criteria for drawing districts. Is this too small to work off of? Can people see this? It's a little bit small, I would say, but it looks like you've got a zoom in button there at the top of your screen. So if you zoom in, maybe that would be great. Oh, okay. Does that help? Yeah, that's great. Okay. So I won't go through all this, you know, I encourage everybody to go to the website and read this. Again, the, the point of this uh, document was for people who perhaps are not into this as much as all of us in the meeting, both to learn and then to get into the criteria. So there's some background about what is redistricting, when is it done, who creates the lines, what data are used, um, Will the new maps be, be based on existing lines? No, we're not going to use the old lines. Uh, and then the prior question, will prior voting data be used? No, we, we explicitly said we are not using voter preference information to generate the maps. Um, it's a little bit of a nuance. We'll be, I'm going to just share the criteria here in a minute. We are not using voter preference data to generate maps. Once the maps are done, we will then compare some prior election results to compare the maps for partisan fairness, proportionality. So among the completed maps, we will choose for those that tend to lean toward better proportionality. Um, so then we get into criteria and I won't go, I won't go over these very long because everybody knows these, but what are the non-negotiables, we have to comply with the Voting Rights Act. We have to nest three assembly districts within each Senate district. And then we did prioritize the criteria. And, and again, this is the work of Anne Marie. Um, she, call them, she calls them group one, two, three, four, first order criteria, sort of highest, pri highest priority after the Voting Rights Act. The districts have to be contiguous meaning you have to be able to walk across the whole district without crossing another district line. Now, one interesting thing that we're learning, the last sentence, discontiguity is allowed when wards themselves are not contiguous. Wisconsin's kind of funny, about a third of our wards are actually not contiguous themselves. There's one in Appleton that's like seven or eight little pieces. Um, and, you know, I asked the question the other night, why is that? Well, it's, it has to do with uh, annexation and just the way the cities were formed way back when. So there may be some discontinuity when the wards themselves are not continued because one of our principles is we're not going to split the wards. The, the districts will be compact. And then another really bottom line is we are going to preserve 
counties like Dunn County. We're going to preserve counties. We're going to preserve municipalities. And this is obviously a major difference between what we're trying to advocate for and what was done in 2011 when counties and municipalities were split willy-nilly for, uh, for the benefit of voter preference and partisan. So then um, second order criteria, community of interest. This is a very good definition. I won't go through the whole thing. I will say that the way that we are using communities of interest is to make decisions about higher rank priorities. For example, we know that some counties have to be split. Even in the best of situations, about 45 to 47 out of 72 counties will need to be split to make up the assembly districts, et cetera. So using the community of interest data to say, okay, which counties does it make sense to split? Uh, population deviation is something that could get us in trouble legally if we don't adhere to it to some degree, but to the extent where we prioritize other above things more, we'll be able to play with population deviation. And then finally, again, partisan fairness. We are not using voting preference data to draw maps, but when the maps are done, we will look at the maps and the ones that tend to shift a little bit toward more proportional outcomes would have our preference using data from the last five years of statewide elections. And then finally, competitiveness. We've heard over and over from all of you and all across the state that non-competitive districts result in elected officials who listen and do not, who do not listen and do not respond to constituents. So of course, we want competitive maps. And Janelle, this is a, this is a correction to the way the slides were done. Competitiveness is not strictly a criterion for the People's Map Commission. You know, we're not doing anything to say, okay, this is our criteria, but we do feel like competitiveness will return by the way we do prioritize a criteria. And that's the key point. The commission does consider an increase in competitiveness to be very important. We think it will occur. Uh, so, all right, why don't we go to the slides? If there's any questions on the criteria, I'm happy to take them. Janelle, oh, I need to stop sharing. So I'm going to stop sharing. If, can you go to the slides now? Yeah, sure thing. So we can pretty much skip this one because I think I've gone through the criteria. If you want to just flip forward to our plans there. OK, so the planned work of the commission now, we, we do have a hearing coming up the week of April 12. That's not written in stone, but we're, we're planning to have a hearing that week specific to the criteria, presenting them to the public, getting some expert testimony again. So that's going to be our hearing where we say, OK, here are the criteria, get some public comment. Um, you know, I've already showed you the website, but that's still a work in project, work in process, I mean. And then down here, review preliminary maps with Moon Dutch. And so there is no census data, but as was stated previously, there is 2019 more data, ACS data, and there's gonna be maps that are start to be drawn. And, and as we draw those maps, and we show the fairness of them, maybe we can use the quantitative data that Don Leap was talking about and, and, and start advocating around those. Um, and then of course, the communities of interest data, that's gonna be ongoing, as Janelle said, by July, hopefully all those are given and uh, we'll plug those in. Um, and okay, and then finally, number two here, we do hope, and this is from what I've heard in the, in the PMC meetings, we do hope to get to finally in-person public comment and hearings by this summer. And that'll be exciting. I've never met the other commissioners, so it'll be exciting to meet them and all of you people. And then uh, the census data will come out. Now, what we've been told is by mid-August, this is from the other night, we've, we've been told that hopefully by mid-August, we'll have some real data to use. And you know, all of us are concerned about the compressed period where we have to use this information, but we think it'll happen. We're, we're, we're not worried that there still is time 
to get good maps out, to compare with the legislature, to go through the judicial process and in time for next spring uh, elections. And then finally, I'm excited with Anne Marie to help prepare the final report because we see this you know, as a document that's gonna live way beyond the commission, the current commission. And we really hope that future decades will use what the People's Map Commission is doing now in future census. So I'll stop there and take any questions. And it's fine if there aren't any. <laughs> uh, earlier, Janelle said that there were approximately 200 communities of interest. I was surprised by how large that number is. Um, do you foresee that that will be whittled down into some stronger communities and lesser uh, and weaker communities? Uh, that may have bad choice of words there, but larger no, and smaller. That's a great question, Ed. And, you know, I'm going to be honest and tell you that I feel it's almost a little experimental, you know, uh, and maybe that's not the right word, but um, I think we're all learning how to use that information. As I said, it's going to be used in choosing where to make splits for other criteria. Um, but yeah, I agree. I don't think we're going to be able to incorporate 200 communities of interest in the maps. So there is going to have to be some uh, prioritizing of the communities of interest. And I think it's going to be a subject of discussion month to month in meetings like this. And, and we'll learn from it. And hopefully it's something that can be used again in, in future redistricting. And, you know, maybe Carlene has Beach and who we're going to hear from. Maybe she'll have more to say about that. I'll be honest, I'm a novice at it. I, I really, this communities of interest thing is, I'm learning as you guys are learning. It sounds like it's very complex. I would imagine everyone's learning a lot. <laughs> right, but it's, it's a good and very positive learning. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yep. So I have a question. Um, this is Debbie Patel from the Grassroots North Shore Milwaukee. Um, the partisan fairness a measure that you're going to lay over the maps or take a look at, do you, have you decided on what software you're using or is that something that um, Duchin and her team can help with or how do you plan right. to do that particular piece? Yeah, the, definitely the answer would be we, we will be leaning on Moon Duchin's uh, MDG group to help us understand, you know, my thought is it's, it's going to be plugged in and the election results of the last five years are gonna be plugged in. And then uh, the computer is gonna spit out to us which maps create a little more proportionality. But it, yeah, to answer your question, it will be coming from Moon Duchin, but I don't know the software that she's planning to use on that. Fine. Thank you. Yeah. Can I just put a plug in for watching the working meetings? Sure. I, I've been watching the working meetings and it's, it's impressive the depth of the conversation that the, um, that the commissioners have, the things that they're weighing and how seriously they take this. Um, and just, you know, some, some of the things that they've clearly talked about in depth in their smaller working groups that they bring back to the larger one. I haven't been watching all the smaller ones, but it's, it's an incredible amount of work and mental energy to just wrap your brains around this. And I just can't thank you and the rest of the commissioners enough for, for doing this as volunteers. I mean, I think it's just, it's incredibly commendable. And if you wanna, I mean, if you're geeky like me and you don't mind just sitting there and not being able to say a whole lot and watching these people talk about things, it's very interesting. But I think, you know, we were talking in the small groups where the motivation comes from. And, you know, I think there's a really deep, deep place where it comes from. You know, we want to break out of the extremism. We want to bring back the middle. And so definitely uh, it is a lot of work, volunteer work, but it's all very much worth it, Carlene, as you know. Can I, can I make a comment or ask a question? Sure. 
Yeah, I think um, what I'm seeing is that you're we're, we, uh, everyone is collecting a lot of uh, local sort of micro level detail and the, the challenge is gonna be to take that information in each area, each region and try to build something that makes sense into the, the, the districts. And, and I think that's, you know, like where the, the real challenge is gonna come in, even when you have your criteria, it's gonna be difficult to um, see what it means in the big picture when you're looking, when you've got so much detailed information. So anyway, I'm, I'm just giving that some thought and I wonder if you had, have any thought about that as well. Well, no, I mean, you're absolutely right. And, and um, I think Janelle mentioned her goal is 200 COI. I don't think there's been that many yet. And, you know, I know what I've heard from Moon Duchin is similar that she's hoping for hundreds. I don't think we're there yet. So if we do get there, you know, then absolutely. How do you plug all that data in? I, you know, if, if there had not been a census delay, we would probably be making decisions a lot quicker and probably not using as much of the COI data. So one of the effects of the census delay is going to be more of the COI data and how to use it. I, I just want to say that we're actually hoping for a thousand COI maps. Oh, Carlene, what are we going to do with a thousand? Okay. We're going to give them to Moon and MGGG <laughs> is going to make a heat map from them and you know, computers do things in seconds. It's not like we have to draw these maps with markers, right? Okay. This is not a crayon operation. <laughs> but you still have to tell the computer what to do. <laughs> That's a hard thing. Yeah, I think J Jan's got a question and then maybe Juliet, I think. Okay. Yeah, uh, thank you, Janelle. Um, so not, not understanding the technical parts of this very well. I hope my question isn't um, inappropriate, but is the reason that we want thousands of community of interest ideas, is that because really at the base of this thing, we need to have a broad base of Wisconsin citizens who are invested in the people's maps process? Is that really what we're after? or? is having a thousand flowers blooming have other purposes as well? Yeah. I mean, I can answer myself and then maybe Carlene. Um, no, I think we're truly interested in COIs and how the democratic process can help COIs. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's just uh, an attempt to increase advocacy for the whole effort, no. Um, I think it doesn't hurt in that regard. But no, I, I think it's more of an interest in understanding how people truly live and what they are interested in um, and how they see themselves in a community. Um, so that's the way I'm looking at it. Carlene? I would ditto exactly what you said. I think this is about people have been impacted adversely by the maps that have been were drawn in 2011. And this is an opportunity for people to have input into how it should and could be different. And the, the software that allows a heat map to be made, heat map being where things show up most often, is, is a really good way of making sure that people have that kind of input. So yeah, we definitely want to build the case by having lots and lots of people participate, but their participation is about where, where their community should be and how their community should be represented in, a, in a, uh, the maps that, that represent our state. Thank you. Juliet, and then I see Kathleen's I got a question after Juliet. Oh, Juliet, you don't have a question? Okay, Kathleen, Blake, go ahead. Hi, um, and my understanding to, to address that same question is that what we're talking about by a thousand COI maps is, um, not just a thousand points of data, but, a, but each point of data represents multiple people. And, um, and however large each group is that has made that map. And what's really um, powerful about that is it gives data as a base, it uses data as a basis 
for argument's sake when arguing before court, um, but it also gives power to the individual groups who have reason to want to speak to a legislator um, on particular topics that they're concerned with. And they have more power when they're coordinated together as that group. So it's, it's actual, and it does a lot of marketing, a, a ton of marketing that will help in the end um, to push it through. So there is a steep climb ahead of us, but um, you know, it all started with one person wanted to change things. That's all it takes to get it going and, and it's power to the people. Can I just- I don't have anything, add? That, that was well put. And I just really, you guys are doing an incredible job out West and, and, and it sounds like you're gonna be doing a lot of uh, COI stuff out there. So keep it up. I just want to add to what Kathleen said about the qualitative data, the qualitative remarks that you put in with your COI maps are very, very important. And they'll actually be doing um, a heat map of those remarks as well as the maps to find the, the things that come up again and again and again in what people talk about. And Moon has talked about the qualitative as well as the quantitative and the qualitative almost being more important in some regards in thinking about what makes a community as the quantitative. So absolutely what Kathleen said. And I've, I was asked to put the link for the, uh, for the YouTube for those working meetings in the chat. So the YouTube channel that you see is for those working meetings for all the geeks out there. <laughs> <laughs> we can probably take one more question if someone has one. And if not, I'll get mine in. <laughs> so um, I'm curious, Commissioner Phyllis, I know you've been working on the criteria with Anne Marie and what are there other working groups in the PMC and what are they working on? Sure. Um, yeah, we have several subcommittees. One is called the Communities of Interest Subcommittee. Uh, Melissa Prentice, um, Elizabeth Tobias, um, and Anne Marie. Are working on that. So they're the ones that are coordinating with uh, Moon Duchin and really doing a lot of the coordinating for the train the trainer and the district R. Um, and then we have a uh, outreach subcommittee, uh, mainly Ben Rangel, because uh, he's younger, doing, you know, the Twitter uh, and other social media outreach. And so at each meeting we talk about, okay, how, what are we doing to get this message out? You know, there hasn't been a huge emphasis on that to the present because the emphasis has been on let's do the hearings, let's get the data. But now we are very interested now in getting our results out there and, um, you know, such as with this website. So you'll see more outreach. So there's the COI subcommittee, the outreach subcommittee, and the line drawer subcommittee, which is myself, um, the gentleman up north, Jason Bissonette, Anne Marie, and Chair Ford. Um, where we were the main ones to develop these criteria and bring them to the commission. And now I think our next effort will be to start drawing some maps with Moon, which is very intimidating. But yeah, those are the main three. And then we do have another one called, uh, um, uh, what's it called? Lessons Learned. So at the end, we have one called Lessons Learned, which I think is mainly gonna focus on the report to summarize the work, what have we learned? Would we have done something differently? Um, and then put it out there. You know, I'm so excited about this website. I'll always be there. To me, it's a historical document. So very excited. Super, well, this has been really informative. <laughs> um, and thank you so much for being here and you're welcome to stay for Carlene's updates and our wrap up, but um, thank you, thank you very much for being here for all the work that you're doing. And um, we're, feel really, really lucky to have um, the commission working on this. So thank you very much. Thank all of you. Thank you, Tony. I'm gonna sure. stick around, I always learn stuff from Carlene. <laughs>
Awesome, as as we all do. <laughs> all right, uh, so Carlene, you're up. Okay, so um, this has come out in the, the um, newsletter last time, and I've also included it in the team leaders update. Um, the For the People Act has a lot of really good things in it re, uh, related to ending partisan gerrymandering. So if you haven't contacted Tammy Baldwin and Ron Johnson yet, please do. Um, a lot of the laws that we're seeing the our, our own state government uh, try to pass and also like places in like Georgia and Texas and Arizona would, uh, would not be possible if this were passed. So it's federal but it does impact us at a state level, especially when it comes to voting rights and gerrymandering. Um, so the district, uh, the, the community mapping piece is the next stage as uh, Tony has so well laid out. We are having district R software training specifically for Wisconsin, specifically for Wisconsin on uh, Saturday, April 10th, so not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, and I'm sure that um, if we have about 20 people already signed up. My goal is to have 75 to 100 folks signed up um, statewide to help facilitate community conversations and to, um, and to draw their own maps with their own family or, or people in your neighborhood. I've drawn a um, couple of maps. We're going to be doing that um, in May at the Oregon Area Progressives Open Mic, that's gonna be what we do. We're gonna draw maps. And so several of us are gonna have that training. I strongly uh, suggest that you go to either the Monday or Wednesday train the trainer before that, uh, that Saturday training, just so that you have, or go on, go on to District R and play with it some so that you know what your questions are when you come to that training, because we want it to be something that you leave feeling like you're ready to help other people draw maps, not just your own maps, but to, to really spread this, because we have a timeline that goes up by 100 every two weeks. And uh, we're as the number of maps that we would like to have submitted. So um, it's, you know, that's going to be a challenge. Uh, but we really need to be helping support the work of the People's Maps Commission. And so uh, our teams, Legal Women Voters teams, uh, chapters, Wisconsin Farmers Union groups, all kinds, citizen action, church groups, rotary clubs, we want people drawing these maps. So please come to the training. The link is there. Sign up. Come ready to uh, to be trained to ask your questions and leave helping other people draw maps. That, uh, that's it for that one. Um, so the other thing that's happening all through the month of April that is super important is making your voice heard on the budget. So just to give you an idea, I know that you heard from Sheila Plotkin after the, after the airing of, um, of um, can you hear us now? She's the, the mastermind between We the Irrelevant. These are the just the three major pieces of legis legislation that were passed in the lame duck session of, uh, and actually first is the lame duck session and then the other two are the only two things that the governor called a special session on. And you can see that on two of those, almost 100% of the people were contacting saying, don't do this. And legislators still did them. Uh, the the anti-gun um, violence uh, general session, special session, sorry, that was called is the only one that had something more than 10%. So you can see that legislators are not listening. So next slide, please. I'm strongly, strongly advocating people go to the budget hearings. Um, there's a budget hearing in, at UW Stout, so close to you. And there's also a virtual one on April 28th. And one of the things that the governor put in the budget, he didn't put any money in because he knew that that would be struck down, but he did put in a requirement that the legislature take up the people's maps. 
and that they not be drawn by any political party. So what, what we're advocating is that people uh, go to the hearings and next slide, please. They add this to whatever their issue is. So mine has always been public education or healthcare. Those are my two big issues and climate change, but whatever it, whatever it is, and your testimony was saying, I wouldn't need to come before you today to beg for funding to address public education funding if the state legislature was not so gerrymandered and representatives were accountable to us, the people of Wisconsin, and partisan gerrymandering take up the people's maps. We need to have them hear this again and again and again and again. Never again will the state legislature be able to say, people didn't say anything. They didn't really care. We didn't hear from them. We are continually making our voices heard and the budget is the most important thing now. And so there are the two dates, UW-Stout, that's an in-person hearing. So know that you have to get there early, you have to sign up. And, um, you know, it's, I've testified at lots of these. And so it's, it's a long and arduous process. The earlier you get there, the more likely you are to have your time come up. Um, and then there is a virtual hearing on the 28th and you do have to sign up to testify at that virtual hearing. So uh, please do that. If you feel comfortable going in person to UW-Stout, please do. If you don't feel comfortable, please sign up for the virtual hearing. And I, one more thing I just wanna mention quickly, it's not part of this, but April 29th is the League of Women Voters National Day of Action. We have and that, Carly, coming up. Oh, you got it? Excellent, yep. okay. I didn't see it before, thank you. No worries, and sorry about the red note up here. That's my strategy to not forget things, and it stayed there. <laughs> <laughs> so now everyone can know how I try to not forget things. Um, so our last section here, well, thank you, Carlene. Um, it's always really, really great to see, to step back from Western Wisconsin and see what's happening. And the Fair Maps Coalition is really um, giving us great leadership on how we can participate in all of this. So thank you. Um, as you know, we want to get as many people involved as possible and the communities of interest, all of these different actions that we're taking, what Ann Leek told us about, um, what the referendum teams are doing, the We Map contest, all of these things are, you know, hoping to bring more people in because we really need 25% of people in Wisconsin to be active on this to get to a tipping point. And that's research that has been done over and over. And so, there are many of us and we're doing lots of great work, but we need more of us. <laughs> um, so one way to help new people. So we're, we've been doing this series of Fair Maps 101. What is gerrymandering? We've had um, 59 people trained so far. Um, and so I encourage you to share this with people. It's not meant like if you already know all this stuff, this is really for people who want to start um, to be active in this and it's a lot to take in. If someone comes to our meeting without having a little bit of background, it probably doesn't make much sense. There's a lot of terms being thrown around. So if you wanna invite someone to join our group, it might be valuable for them to first go to a Fair Maps 101 and then come join us. So uh, the link should be in the chat and this is on Facebook, share it. Even if you don't know anyone personally to invite, although that's optimal, um, just share it on Facebook, get the word out. Um, so we'll continue to do those once a month until we think that there's no more value in them. <laughs> and next, I, many of you I think watched Can You Hear Us Now? And Commissioner Tony Phillips was on the panel discussion. We ended up having three, 300 people watch the film and 86 people were at the panel discussion. So it's a really great way to continue to get the word out. If you didn't see the film, but you still want to, it's available on Vimeo and um, Amazon Prime. So you still can check it out. You just have to pay $5 now. <laughs> and a shout out to um, Grassroots North Shore. A few people from them are with us today. Uh, they have a fantastic meeting coming up on April 12th with, um, I don't even know if I want to try his name, Stephanopoulos. Um, but he, he will be talking about um, elections and constitutional law and he was part of the Whitford case. So I'm sure this will be a really, really informational. So you're welcome to join their team 
Uh, I think he starts talking around 7.30. So um, feel free to join. Is that right, Deborah? 7.30? Oh, Debbie. That, you're that's close. Yeah, okay. that's close. You'll probably tune in about 730. Right. Okay. Awesome. So check that out if you can. And then just a few actions. Uh, Kathleen mentioned the phone banking. Um, it's two and a half hours. I did it last Saturday. It went by super fast and it's really fun. And uh, Kathleen's 100% right. A lot of people have not heard about the referendum. So easy way to get the word out. Um, Kat, uh, Carlene, Pat, do you have a comment? Oh, excuse me for interrupting. Uh, uh, I was under the impression that the uh, phone bank for Polk County was just for uh, people that reside in Polk County only. I didn't realize that, I mean, being in Pierce County, that I could also, uh, you know, volunteer for the phone bank. I thought it was just strictly uh, Polk County. Oh, good point. Yeah, that's a little, the wording is confusing. So thanks for pointing that out. We're calling people in Polk County, but anyone can participate. Um, I was with a woman from Madison last Saturday, so <laughs> anyone can anyone can participate. Okay, thanks for clarifying. Thanks, Pat, for the good question. Um, Joint Finance Committee hearings with Carlene talked about. We have a little, um, basically, the information that Carlene gave us. I put in a blog post, so if you want to go there, you've got all the links and the language all in one place. And Kathleen's putting that in the chat, and I'll share that when I send the follow up. And then I think Ellen Oaks is on the call. Is she still? No, she had to step away. Um, so the League of Women Voters has a day of action on April 29th. Wait, is Ellen still here? Um, is anyone from the League on this call that could share about it or not? No. If not, I'll just say that details are coming soon on their website. So if you wanna check this out, I know it's gonna involve a walk through Menominee. Um, it's gonna be great for raising awareness. And so pay attention to it. A lot of the local chapters are having an action day on that day. Um, so keep your eyes open. It it's probably will be beautiful and a fantastic time to do an in-person activity. And I can, can I just add one thing to that? Go ahead, yeah. We're, um, we're also thinking that sometime around that time, maybe when the legislation is introduced. And so there may be a rally in Madison around that time, probably not on the 29th, but in conjunction with the league around, uh, around the legislation. So just keep your ears open for that. Again, those amorphous dates are really difficult to make a plan around, but just keep it in the back of your mind that the league and the coalition will be sponsoring something. Awesome. And um, because many of us are getting vaccinated and the weather is getting warmer, we will have more and more in-person events this summer, which is really exciting. And I just wanted to do a quick um, poll. You can raise your hand, but we, many of us have never met in person and we think it would be pretty cool to have an event just for WWNVD to kind of get us all energized before the maps actually come out. And so if you think, you know, we're a pretty big area, so people may have to drive like an hour to get to an event, um, but it would be on a weekend and somewhere outside and beautiful is quick, just raise your hand if that's something that you would in theory, like to participate in, in in August to get to meet people and maybe have to drive up to an hour. Okay, so a little more than half maybe. Okay, awesome. Good to know. Our next meeting is Thursday, May 6th. And just a little reminder that we the people have the power to create change and that's why we're working here. So thank you all of you for being on this journey. It's really great to be with you. And I'm really looking forward to change. And we'll next year at this time, hopefully we all patting ourselves on the backs and having a big party in person <laughs> to celebrate. So if you want to take yourselves off mute and let's, um, our saying can be fair maps, Wisconsin as we send ourselves off into the evening. So. The count of three, we can say fair amounts, Wisconsin, and then say goodbye. So 
One, two, three. Fair match. Wisconsin. <laughs> Yay. Thank you, everyone. Have a fantastic Thank evening. Thank you. Take care. Enjoy spring. Happy spring. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.